How's it going, Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to fix an oil leak on a Honda GCV160 engine by installing a governor shaft seal. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so today in the shop, I have this GCV160 Honda engine. These are going to be common on a lot of MTD mowers, as well as many other brands. Honda engines are known for their reliability. However, if you guys notice a little bit of oil on the left rear side of your push mower, you may have an oil leak coming out of the governor shaft seal, which is right there. And the reason this occurs is simply because Honda did not use a governor shaft seal on these GCV160 engines to prevent oil from coming out of that area. For whatever reason, they just didn't run one back in the day. However, Honda's newer series of GXV160 engines do come with the governor shaft seal already installed from the factory, and that is going to be the part that we're installing today. The part number is a Honda 91231-Z1V-003, and it is simply a rubber seal that we're going to be pressing over the governor shaft to prevent oil from leaking out of the engine onto the left rear side of the mower. Now, before we get into this repair, I'm just gonna go through a few things here. I do have the fuel line and the fuel tank removed. You don't necessarily have to do that, but for the purpose of this video, since I already had the engine removed from the rotted out lawnmower deck, I figured I might as well remove that so we have a little bit more room. Now there's two ways we can start this repair. If you want to, you can remove the governor spring on the governor arm there just to disconnect it. However, if you wanna just move to using your 10 millimeter wrench to loosen off the nut, the arm itself will completely pull off of the governor shaft and you could just set things off to the side so you don't necessarily have to remove the governor spring if you don't want to. If you'd like to though, I would recommend a pair of needle nose pliers just to pull that off and set that off to the side. And just for reference, it does go to that hole right there. And on ours, it went to the first hole on the governor arm. Next up, we're going to take the 10 millimeter wrench and just loosen off that nut right there. Now, the way that this works is there is a split in the bottom of the governor arm shown at the center of the screen and the bolt that goes through it with that nut tightens that down onto the governor shaft coming out of the engine. So what we're gonna do here is loosen this off. It's pretty simple and loosen that up to make removal of the governor arm a little bit easier. However, once you do get that loose, the governor arm should just come right off. Now, because this engine has been leaking for quite some time, you guys can see there's all kinds of oil and gunk around that governor shaft there. So I had to switch cans because my other can, the tip wasn't working. But at this point, before we even remove that clip, we're going to blast away as much of that gunk as we can. So once you spray that area down, you're gonna notice it is going to look a little something like this. We can see now that there is in fact no governor shaft seal installed there. It's essentially just a machined hole through the aluminum engine block that the governor shaft goes through. Now, the next step is what I would recommend. We're going to take our locking pliers. I switched up pairs because the other ones didn't want to lock as well. And you're just going to adjust the end to the point where you can get a nice firm lock on your locking pliers onto that shaft. And then what we're going to do is release them just for now. And we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be installing the oil seal on top of the governor shaft before we remove that clip. All right, so we're over here on the workbench. You guys saw that I do buy these in bulk. They're cheap enough when you buy them directly from a Honda dealer, but I have found that if you're buying them online, just one or two at a time, they can get a little more expensive, but I will try to leave some links down below in the description, as well as in the comments, so that you guys might be able to pick these up on Amazon if they do sell them there. So with that being said, there is going to be two different sides to these seals. There is going to be a smooth side, like you guys see here. And then there is going to be the grooved side. Now you can see that just from my workbench there, we've picked up a little bit of debris. I'm going to be cleaning that seal before we put it in. But the grooved side is going to go to the inside of the engine. And the smooth side, like that, is going to be going to the outside of the engine. 
All right, so I've switched over to the camcorder now, and what I'm gonna be doing is spraying the seal and or the shaft with a little bit of that silicone spray. And what that does is it's just gonna make it easier to push the rubber seal, again with the groove side in towards the engine, over top of that shaft. And we just wanna make sure that we don't press too hard because that clip there is still holding our shaft into place, preventing it from going inside of the engine. Essentially what you wanna do is push the seal back just far enough to the point where we can come over here with our locking pliers and make a secure connection on the outside of this shaft here. And that is now locked in place. So that means that we don't have to worry now about the shaft falling into the engine. Now at this point we can take our needle nose pliers here and we can grab the end of the clip and we're just going to pull that back just like that. The clip goes into a groove on the governor shaft. I'll show you guys that when we're ready for reinstallation. But at this point what we're going to do is use just a small slotted screwdriver to help push that seal into position keeping the locking players locked to the shaft so that it doesn't go inside of the engine. So it's gonna look something like this, guys. You're just working that seal over top of the shaft and slowly pressing it into the machined area that they have here. You wanna just keep going around top and bottom and use your slotted screwdriver to push that seal as far in as you can go. But if you guys work your way around, it will get to the point where you go past the point where the seal is flush with the outer edge of the aluminum engine block here. And I will bring you in for a little close up with my other camera. So it should look a little something like this, guys. I'll bring you up so that you can see a top down view. You can see a significant amount of that seal has sunk into that machined area there. As far in as I can go, just to make sure that that seal is seated in there nice and properly. And that as this governor shaft rotates and the spring clip also rotates, that it doesn't wear up against the rubber seal there. So at this point, we are ready to reinstall our clip onto the groove there. That's what I was talking about before. So the clip just snaps over top of that. Now, when we took it off, the flat side of the clip was facing up. So that's the way that we are going to reinstall it. And we're just going to press that back onto the governor shaft, just like that. At this point, we are going to be removing the locking pliers from the governor shaft. So when it comes time to reinstall the governor arm here, we're just gonna make sure that we don't press too hard because that clip can pop off and once again, you can lose the governor shaft inside of the engine. So we're just gonna take our time. This repair really is simple enough. It's uh, certainly a quick fix. Those seals, like I said, they only cost about four or $5, I think it is. And I'm just gonna take the time to uh, spray down some of the gunk on this governor arm here. Washing your lawnmower before you do this is probably a good idea. So at this point, we are ready to reinstall the governor arm back onto the governor shaft. And a little bit of silicone lube at this point also wouldn't hurt just to make this a little bit easier to reinstall. And then once you get this lined up, we're just going to push that on nice and easy and kind of rock it back and forth, we should get it to the position it is now, which is the fully seated position. But we still have to properly adjust the governor shaft in relation to the governor arm, because if your governor shaft is twisted one way and the governor arm is twisted another way, when the engine throttles up, it may over rev or it may under rev because it's improperly adjusted. So I'll show you how to do that next. When the engine throttles up, the governor shaft starts to spin counterclockwise. So that's going to be towards the carburetor at the top of that shaft there. And because of that bolt down there holding the governor arm onto the governor shaft, this governor arm presses forward to adjust the throttle on your carburetor. So to set one of these is incredibly simple. What you're going to need is, I like to use a set of linesman pliers, and you are going to come to the groove on this 
governor shaft there. And all we're going to do is rotate it clockwise to the right. Simultaneously, you are also going to take the governor arm and you are going to push it to the right as well. So that once this engine starts up, this has a full range of motion towards the carburetor. All right guys, so it's gonna look a little something like this. I'm using my linesman pliers here. And again, we're not rotating towards the carburetor. We're rotating towards the back of the engine and the wide flat head of the linesman pliers is really good to hook up to the little slot that's cut in the end of that governor shaft. And then what I'm doing is I'm holding that with one hand while simultaneously pushing with my finger on the top side of that governor arm there. And at this point we can tighten up the 10 millimeter nut here. And that's it guys. You have successfully installed a governor shaft seal on a Honda GCV 160 engine, making it essentially like a newer GXV 160 engines because all of the new Hondas, they do come with the governor shaft seal already installed, as I mentioned before. So you shouldn't have to worry about any more oil leaking out of that governor shaft. At this point, we can take our governor spring here and hook it back into the bottom hole. And that's it guys, repair is complete. And lastly, before we wrap up today's video, I just wanted to mention that let's say you were doing a seal replacement, not just a seal installation. Let's say someone at some point within the past few years installed the seal and it's leaking. You need to remove the old seal to install a new one. Well, what I've found is these little pick sets here work extremely well. What you're gonna do is the same process basically to expose the rubber seal. And you're gonna go in there with one of these picks and puncture the rubber seal to the point where you can just pull straight out and that seal will come right off of the governor shaft. Once again, a little bit of the silicone lube on the governor shaft will make removing an old seal much easier. And with one of these pick sets here, I got this at Princess Auto. That's gonna be like your Harbor Freight down there in the US. These things are awesome for removing these little seals. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Just a quick repair. This would probably take you about five minutes and you could do it with basic tools that pretty much anybody would have in their shop. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I try to upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.